Hi everybody, it's Kylie Smiley from the Mobile Marketing Link. Um, happy Easter! <laughs> I know it's Good Friday today, and it's not uh, it's not a usual um, uh, day that we would have a, a hangout. But we figure, well, what the heck? We're uh, we're here. We've eaten as many uh, hot cross buns as we can this morning. We're full and we're ready to go. So, um, so look, thanks a lot for joining us today. I am absolutely privileged to have uh, joining us the publicity princess Kate Engler. Uh, Kate, who likes the idea um, of uh, of absolutely making sure that that small to medium business are is aware of what they can do publicity wise and uh, and hopefully do it for little to no cost at all. So um, just a little bit about Kate. Kate um, Kate <coughs> was the only publicist invited to speak at uh, the same event as Sir Richard Branson on one of his Australian tours. So it's pretty clear she's held in high esteem. Uh, but you don't have to be an international business guru to get the media interest in you. Kate will share with you the secrets to getting massive amounts of free publicity whenever you like, no matter the size or location of your business. With over 20 years in PR and publicity, getting media exposure for hundreds of clients, including World Vision, the Dal um, Dilmar T. P&O Cruises, Make-A-Wish Foundation and the Starlight Children's Foundation, Kate is about to reveal an untapped gold mine of daily media opportunities that most other businesses uh, mistakenly overlook. And if you're thinking it involves some mysterious secret uh, and secret media um, and the way to go about it, think again. Kate will debunk the mysterious me uh, media myth and make it truly simple. So you'll be way ahead of most offline and online businesses who are missing out on a huge potential uh, because they're not using free publicity. So just take a look at what Kate's um, publicity secrets can do for you. And today we'll be discussing that in um, in length and as well as uh, also how it relates to the mobile world and the digital world. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Kate. Hi, Kate. How are you? Hi Kylie, I'm fantastic, thanks. How are you? Excellent. Happy Easter. And to you, to you and your thanks. family, very happy, safe um, Easter. Thank you very much. So Kate, look, I really appreciate you coming on today and um, and for many of the people that are that will be watching this, there, uh, they, you know, many of them really haven't touched on media and, and getting free publicity. Uh, and this is one of the mysteries is that they don't realise what a where they can you know how easily it is to access and where they go to get it and also the impact of it. So um, I'm just wondering if you wouldn't mind just elaborating a little bit on on you know your background perhaps and and other you know experiences with small to medium businesses and their uh, outcomes of using free publicity. Sure, sure. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I think um, you and I share a very common. Um, drive a very common passion for um, the small to medium businesses you know um, we were talking earlier about um, just how much of the backbone those businesses are to our, our great country and without them there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of freedom that gets lost um, for business owners so um, it's great to be with a like-minded um, community and sharing this information and you're right um, Kylie when you talk about um, lots of small business owners kind of looking at this magical holy grail thing called free publicity and the free coverage that's available every day and and many small to medium business owners simply when considering that sadly think um, two things one is they think um, no one's going to be interested in me I'm just a little old business coach or I'm just a little old hairdresser or I'm just a little old financial planner or whatever you happen to be um, and who's going to want to hear but I don't have any stories you know and and that's really not the case there are stories that live inside the businesses every single business in this country there's stories in, that live inside that not only about um, 
about the business owner and what they do, but the way that what they do impacts and changes the lives of their customers. So there's there's a plethora of stories out there. So that's really one of the things that stops a lot of small businesses um, from embracing publicity. They think that they are not newsworthy, right. and they indeed. Um, but the second thing that often stops small businesses is simply the the methodology of of engaging with um, with publicity and with PR firms. Traditionally, there, there's really only been one way to access all of the free media that's available every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year, and that is via the traditional. PR agency model, you know, where you pay them and they do it all for you and, and the billings rack up, you know, it's not uncommon at all for PR agencies to charge anywhere between three and five thousand dollars month in month out and have a minimum six month in, uh, retainer engagement. Um, and most small businesses, when they do the maths on that, they just think, oh, you know, I can't afford that. And so by virtue of two myths, um, of one, I'm not newsworthy, there's no stories inside my business, and two, even if there were stories inside my business, I can't afford it. Um, by virtue of those two myths, most small business owners, many small business owners stay really stuck and they don't, um, they don't what we call step up and stand out. They don't look at embracing publicity as part of their marketing mix because they think those two things really stop them. And mm. so our mission is to, well really our secret mission is to have businesses step up and be bigger versions of themselves than they previously knew themselves to be. That's our secret mission. But the, the methodology that we use to have them step up and stand out is publicity. And so we put the power of the media very much directly in the hands of the small business owners themselves and and teach them exactly how they can structure their own publicity campaigns where they don't ever need to retain an agency again. So, you know, that's that's our mission and we travel around the country doing that and bringing this knowledge, this sort of um, 25 years of insider secrets to small business owners directly and, um, and empowering them to step up and stand out and be bigger versions of themselves than they previously thought possible and that's exciting. That's huge. That's fantastic, and I'm I'm truly excited about learning about this as well because um, you know I'm a bit of an opportunist also, um, and some might say, oh well, you know, Kylie, you've got more guts than me, and I I don't know, you know, if I could really tell anybody about myself. And I said, well, you know, you do it every day. You're in front of customers all the time, and they want to know about you. So it's really no different. And and certainly, I'm um, I'm truly intrigued about the ways that we can do it. Uh, you know, for free or low cost, and not have to engage in an agency. And not to say that agencies, you know, they have their place. But for small business operators, it's um, you know, it's it's just it's a real challenge for them to uh, you know to make sure that their cash flow is coming through to start with, and then to try and you know make sure that they they're they're getting as much um, exposure as possible at uh, you know at little cost and. And certainly for you to be going around the country, giving them that education, I think that's phenomenal. And so, um, so I'm sure everybody's on the edge of their seat, probably like me, <laughs> wondering uh, a couple of, uh, you know, if, you, if you're able to give us a couple of little uh, nuggets that uh, we could possibly take away today, or have a think about um, uh, either doing ourselves or having someone else, you know, do it for us to gain that exposure. Um, and enlighten us as to, to what what you know what would small businesses need to do? Um, that would be lovely. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, everything begins with a media release. <clears throat> the the door to media land begins with a media release. Um, and and there's a couple of myths about the media release that people are a little um, they get confused by. Um, one is that when people think about the media release, they think they need their media release to be um, as close to the finished product of what appears in the paper, for example, um, the same applies across radio and, and TV. But people think that the media release needs to be um, as close to the finished article as it possibly can, and nothing could be further from the truth. The media release really just has one job, and that is to get the phone to ring. And the phone, the phone ringing isn't customers. 
the phone ringing is the journalist. The, the media release only has one job and that is to get the journalist to phone you. It's not to tell the whole story, it's not to have the finished article done, it's none of that. The primary role of the media release is simply to get the journalist to phone you and say, hey, you know, this is interesting and can I please speak with Kylie? Um, and then it's, then it's your job to bring that story to life a bit more. It's your job to fill in the blanks. It's your job to take the seed of intrigue that the journalist clearly has as a result of your brilliantly written media release, um, to take that seed of intrigue and to expand on it so that the journalist gets then the backstory. They get, they get everything. So um, a key thing about the media release is to have one idea in the media release, one idea, one release, one page, one pitch. One idea, one release, one page, one pitch. And getting that pitch right, um, because every every journalist that we have spoken to says that they love a follow-up call to follow up their media release. Um, every time you have the opportunity to pitch your idea to a journalist, you've got about 10 seconds. So you really want to make sure that you've nailed your pitch, that you have it absolutely spot on. Um, the pitch starts on the page, there's no question, but then it also follows through with a verbal pitch. And to have that information and that pitch nailed so that you can capture them in 10 seconds is a real, is a real art and it's you know, certainly something that we help people with too. So the media release is definitely the door opener. Um, one page um, laid out a certain way, you know, you have a headline, you have a couple of paragraphs, you have a quote, then you have some dot points and then you have a closing paragraph and then a call, um, a call to action. The call to action is to the journalist, you know, for more information about blah, contact so and so. So it's a call to action for the journalist to find out the hidden secrets behind why Australian business is failing, contact you know, for example. So it's a really strong call to action for the journalist. And that's essentially the layout of the media release. It doesn't, you know, our eyes love white spaces. So, you know, two headline, two paragraphs, a quote in its own paragraph, dot points about your industry, not about the product. That's another big mistake that many people make, is that they make the dot points about the product. Oh, this product will do this and this and this, and they list the, the product. Um, features really, not even benefits sadly, um, in those dot points and that's something that we don't want to do. The dot points are designed to be industry related dot points, not product related dot points. Um, and then a closing paragraph and then a call to action. So if your community follow that really simple formula, their publicity efforts will be seen in a much more positive light than if they try and send more in peace. Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. I uh, I certainly wrote those down. I hope everybody that's watching wrote those down because they are um, that that piece of information is really gold because it's not not only could you use that uh, for a media release, but certainly even in in just in general when you go to write like a flyer at all, anything that's um that's related to um, to the business that you want to gain more interest. That process is uh, could be used on, on multiple levels and really is the foundation of getting attention. Would you agree? Oh, completely, completely. And, and, and having those key messages tight and nailed absolutely is, is essential across your Facebook posts, across your, your tweets, across your brochures, across your website. You know, we really are a very instant gratification driven world. And if people need to spend too much effort um, trying to find the right information about you, then they're, they're inclined not to invest the effort. Um, so having your messages really clear and concise is vital across all the marketing that you do. Yeah, I couldn't agree more and um, certainly, you know, I'm in the process of, of getting all that straight myself. Uh, it does, you know, it's a, it, it is a process and, but, um, but once you have it, have it down, even just um, sending out uh, an online press release to introduce uh, the industry that you represent or give some sort of news, it can only, you know, it could be 
it could be, you know, two paragraphs. It could be 300 words. It doesn't have to be, as you said, it doesn't have to be war and peace. It's funny you said it because I said that all the time. I've had <laughs> books, war and peace. I'm like, oh, okay, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so I, I, I just, I love that you come from that that space, and it's it's so important. Uh, and I, I'm forever banging on about making sure that that people are writing in a way that it's it's beneficial to the reader. So it's because the reader's only interested in what what's what's the effect on me, what's in it for me, um, and that that covers across you know all sorts of media and. Um, Speaking of, of media, you know, mobile uh, again, you know, that that's the other platform that that now everybody they're very used to. But they're, you know, people who are receiving messages are uh, often getting frustrated because those messages aren't in a, you um, know, in a, you know, they're not presented in a mobile friendly manner, uh, and that's causing some frustration. So this is. We're ensuring that a you you know if you have a website that your website's mobile friendly, but that message, those key messages um, that you've spoken about, Kate, are very clear at the top, and they're and they're not you know too lengthy. So even more now with everything mobile, it's really important to make sure you've got short, punchy, straight to the point. What's in it for them? Message, video, via video, via image. And Kate, I know that um, that you've done. You know some work with some businesses where uh, where they've involved video and you know the digital world. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about some of those clients and how they've integrated their you know the free publicity into those mediums? Sure, um, a couple of things to say um, about that and. And I love what you say about putting your key messages up nice and high. Um, I always say to our clients, when you get your media coverage, make sure that the media logo of where you've appeared is up really high on your website so that when people are looking at your website on whatever device, whether it's desktop, laptop, you know, tablet or phone, <clears throat> that those the fact that you've appeared in the media hits them straight away because it's an instant credibility builder. And if they're trying to decide between your financial planning company and someone else's financial planning company, and they see that you've been featured in, you know, the Age Money section or the Mortgage Industry Association magazine, instantly you get the jump in terms of credibility. And it's kind of it's um, it's almost an unconscious boost of trust. People will be will be drawn to do business with you when they know that you've been featured in the media almost on an unconscious subconscious level and it's got to do with that inherent trust because they feel well if the media has profiled them they must be good is kind of the thinking process that goes on in their in their subconscious brain and so you're right getting those getting those media logos up nice and high your key messages your key selling points up nice and high um, are really vital, um, but the digital world has changed. Certainly, changed the way that, for example, newspapers, well, all, all radio, all media, really radio as well as TV, um, engage the viewers. It's there's a huge entertainment component now. I mean, there always has been to news, um, really. That's why they show the gory pictures, sadly. But um, but it's even more pronounced now, and there are dedicated digital teams inside each of the newspapers who are looking for stories at five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, if you've got a story that's newsworthy, what they want to do is have all of the content up and sexy and loaded, <clears throat> um, so that they cap those morning those morning readers. They, you know, if you look at the if you're fortunate enough to have the journalists share the figures with you, which obviously we are, you can see a huge spike um, you know, between that 7 and 8.30 peak period. And what they want to do, what the journalists want to do, what the media outlets want to do is to capture as many eyeballs as that time. So when you're, you still go through the same channels of pitching your story to the journalist, the journalist is the one that's going to write it and put it in the digital environment. So nothing changes there other than perhaps the time of day that you follow them up. You know, normal print journalists, they normally like to be phoned between, you know, 10 and 11.30, 10 and 12.30. 
because they're in, I've checked their emails, they're, they're at their desk sort of, you know, working on their stories. You would never call them in the afternoon, you would never call them after 3 o'clock because they're on deadline and they won't speak to you. And, it, and they'll be annoyed and we don't want to annoy them, we want to build the relationship with the journalists. But, so print media generally like to be called between, you know, 10 and 12.30 ish before they go out to lunch. But the digital team, they start at 5 in the morning. In fact, one digital team starts at 5, oh, that's in radio really, they start at 5.30 in the afternoon to get the stories ready for the first bulletin of the morning. Um, but digital journalists for print, for example, um, they'll start at 5 o'clock. So if, if you've got a story and you want to get the story up, it's worth sending it in at 4.30 or 5 o'clock and then phoning them at 5.30 in the morning, yes, I know you need to get out of bed earlier to do that, but the benefits are are amazing. You know, just this week <clears throat> we had a client who was featured on the mysmallbusiness.com.au part of the Fairfax Media site. Um, and I had a phone call from the journalist at 8 o'clock that morning just saying that the story was going gangbusters and they wanted to move it from just the mysmallbusiness.com site to the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald digital edition. So what she needed was a couple of biochemists that she could speak with. So we, we quickly phoned the client, got the biochemists ready, I briefed them, um, you always want to brief a third person, third party spokesperson uh, that's going to be speaking about your business or your products. I briefed them, got the information back to the journalist and by about 10.30 that morning, once she'd rewritten the story, 10 to 10.30 it went live, on the, the home page of the Sydney Morning Herald because they knew that their readers were interested in it and so they wanted to capture more eyeballs with that story and the great thing for our client is that in 24 hours she had $70,000 worth of sales um, and, and it's the difference between being in, a, in the smallbusiness.com section where she probably would have got around about 20 to 30,000 readers to being on the home page of the sydneymorningherald.com site where she probably got upwards of 200,000 um, readers. So um, the digital space is a very dynamic space and that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have been nimble enough to be able to, to take the call at 8 o'clock in the morning to get those experts organised and to roll them out and give the journalist exactly what she needed within that short space of time. So. So in the digital environment, it is really about being nimble, um, key thing. The other key thing about the digital environment is, is, again, it's about entertainment and it's about eyeballs. Think about how can I bring this story to life with pictures or graphics or, as you said before, a video. Um, whereas in the newspaper, people are accustomed to seeing one picture that goes with a story, sometimes two. In the digital environment, they love the idea of galleries, picture galleries, because as people are swiping through all the pictures, their eyeballs are staying on the story for longer. What that means is that they can then go to their advertisers, the, the newspaper can then go to their advertisers, for example, or the same is true, true with, with TV, and say, for if you want to be featured in this um, section of the, the online in, uh, space, you're going to be getting, you know, 200,000 eyeballs or 300,000 viewers or you know half a million listeners and that's how they that's how they monetize the media it's not the $2.20 you pay on the cover it's the advertising revenue that that has the media um, monetized and they can only do that they can only sell those peak times of advertising for a premium price if the viewers are staying on the space, staying on this page, staying in that digital environment. The only way that we can extend their life in that digital environment is to engage them and draw them into the story. And a key way of doing that is with, with pictures, with images. So <clears throat> you would never send, so just I just want to clarify something, you would never send the pictures directly to the journalist with the media release because many of them have a firewall that will block images or attachments. And so your media release, which is brilliant, may be cut off at the pass, as it were, simply because you didn't know to not attach your images. So don't attach your images with your media release. You send the images after the journalist has spoken with you. So I've got, I've got um, you know, an image, image gallery and when you phone them to pitch to them, you say, I've got an image gallery that could support the story that shows ba 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 and you tell the journalist, paint the visual picture 
for the journalist of exactly what you've got to offer visually because that they are always thinking when they're listening to you pitch, they are thinking, what's the headline? How can I demonstrate this visually? What's the headline? How can I demonstrate this visually? So if when you pick up the phone and pitch to them, you paint that picture for them visually, then you'll stand a much, much higher chance of your stories being picked up. Wow. Okay? Right. Yeah, no, that's so helpful. It's truly, it truly is because, you know, a lot of people, they hesitate in even contacting a journalist or contacting the editor of the paper. But honestly, um, it, it's really just a matter of, you know, it, picking up the phone or, or sending an email. Um, would you agree, Kate, just getting to that first oh. step before we get to the you know, other side? Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. So many people are intimidated, but they, you know, they, they sit there and they look at the phone like it's got a snake around it, and they they are frightened to go near it for fear of you know being I don't know killed or something. I don't know. Um, it's always amazing, but the journalists actually want you to pick up the phone and call them. Um, I know, I know that lots of people find journalists intimidating. There's absolutely no reason that. For that, you know, they're people just like you and I. They breathe in, they breathe out. They breathe in, they breathe out. <laughs> Funny that, you know. Right. They are, right. they are normal, gorgeous, um, supportive people who understand that you're just trying to do your job in the best way that you know how, and they're trying to do their job in the best way they know how. There's no reason to be intimidated by them or frightened of them. Um, and I know that lots of people are, you know, so, so part of our mission is also to bring um, together clients and journalists so that, you, so that they can feel more comfortable about pitching to them, so that they can have those intimidation factors removed, so that they know at least, you know, six journalists on a first name basis and, and you know, being able to connect with the journalist directly is what the journalists actually want themselves. You know, I wish I had a dollar for every journalist that said to me, oh God, I just wish PR people would get out of the way. You know, and they love the fact that we do that and link link um, our clients directly with them because after all, the client is the story. The client is the story. The PR person is not the story. The client is the story. And so journalists want to talk to you. They want to connect with you. They want to understand what moves you and drives you. They want to understand, you know, in this case of this woman during the week, the journalist was fascinated by the fact that this woman literally woke up at the age of 32 like a pizza face. She woke up with really bad um, acne and having spent $6,000 over the next 12 months to find a cure for that, she decided to create her own and so has, has launched this amazing range of skincare products that is both anti-acne and anti-aging. Um, and she sold her house to fund the production of this product because she believed in it so much. That's what the headline on the story was. It wasn't about the pimple, it wasn't about the face cream, it was this woman sold her house to save your skin. That was the story. That was the story. It's never people think that their that their publicity is about their thing, you know, whatever their thing happens to be. I've got my mouse here, but you think it's about the thing, you know, what if you're selling these, you think that you know your publicity is about this. Publicity is never about the thing. It's always about the story behind the thing. What does the thing do? Um, and the journalists want to hear that directly from you. They really and truly do. No, I couldn't agree more. Um, and if that hasn't moved you, for those people watching, you know, um, really uh, nothing's going to because <laughs> Kate has put it beautifully and really she's, you know, I feel like I have, you know, I feel more fearless now at listening to that because, um, you know, I always, I always figured that journalists would be chasing you down but honestly they, they you know, they're, as you said, they're human too and they only know what they know. If you don't let them know you, the news, then, you know, they're not out there scouring the streets and, and looking everywhere. They're, they're looking online and that's why it's important to blog. It's important to make sure that you're, um, you're active on uh, your social media but also you're connecting directly with them. Find out the email address of the editor for, you know, if you're involved in the sports industry for the sports area and, 
um, if you're involved in hospitality, well, the foodie died, and you know, because they they are absolutely um, they're beside themselves trying to work out, okay, who can we cover next? Who can we cover next? And when they get that phone call that, hey, we're having this unusual or fantastic event, or you know, we're sponsoring um, a charity, or there's some major news that's involving our industry. It's just, uh, I mean, it's bliss to them, and that's what—that's the feedback that I've been given as well. Is that you know what? Anything that you come across, um, uh, you know, please let us know. So uh, I couldn't agree more, uh, Kate, and and really feeling having that information from you just to to know that where they stand and how easy it is to really access them is brilliant, and and certainly you'd be crazy not to not to give it a whirl. So, uh, so thank you so much for that. And and um, just going back a little and having a look at the things that you provide, uh, you mentioned that um, that you help business owners connect with journalists and meet journalists. And I understand part of that um, is uh, when you have your workshops. Can you tell us a little bit, a bit about how business owners could meet? Um, journalists face to face and develop some really strong relationships with key journalists close to their their home yeah of course i'd love i'd love to um i i um i'm amazed that this isn't done more to be honest and when i speak with the journalists about what i'm about to share they're like oh my god no one does this this is fantastic um we have a signature event we have a number of one day events around the the country but our signature event um really is designed i love it because the bigness that expands from people inside of this event is really extraordinary and when their bigness expands, their heart expands. And when their heart expands, they are able to make their difference in the world in a much, much more effective way. And that's really what we're about. I said before that we're, we're about, you know, our stealth little project is about creating bigness inside of, of business owners. And that's what this um, our signature three-day event provides. It's called Pitch Perfect Publicity. And it runs over three days. And we've got one coming up in Sydney on the 1st, 2nd and 3rd of May. And essentially this three-day event is designed to get you absolutely media ready, media ready, message ready and pitch ready. Um, over the three days <clears throat> you will refine your pitch to within an inch of your life. You will be able to be woken up at three in the morning and ask a question about your business and respond with a perfect 10 second TV grab. Um, that's, that's how comprehensive the the mental nimbleness that, that is created inside this event is. But the real so so there's an enormous amount of time spent with us working on your pitch, honing your message, working on your, your big why, why it is you do what you do, um, and the value that that then adds. But then on the second day, we bring in a whole lot of journalists. We've got journalists from Fairfax, Spin Review, um, Radio, TV, the whole shooting match coming in to actually work one-on-one -on -one with every single business owner in the room on their pitch. The people who attend this event will have the opportunity to pitch their message directly to the ears of six to eight journalists in a day. Um, and when we ran the, ran, the, ran the event once before, and the response was huge, but in the 48 hours after the event, attendees were featured on radio on both sides of the country. They were featured on Fairfax Digital, and exclusives were negotiated with Channel 7, City Morning Herald, The Age, BRW, and MySmallBusiness.com. So, wow. That's huge. a massive day. It was huge. And and the woman that I that I mentioned before with the, the skincare product, she was at that event. And the publicity that she's been able to generate for her product has been directly linked to being at that event and connecting with the right journalists. So it really is an unprecedented level of access. You get to hear, we'll have a couple of panel discussions with them as well where they will tell you what they want, what time of day they want to be contacted, how they want to be contacted, whether to email and phone or phone then email because each of them will have a different preference. They'll tell you exactly what their particular media outlet wants 
like they will give you their wish list of what it is they want and how to pitch to them and then we'll break into groups as I said and every single attendee will pitch to every single journalist in the room across all media, print, digital, radio and TV. It's an extraordinary wow. level of access. Um, it's, it is our signature event. We're enormously proud of the difference it makes in people's lives, the way their hearts open, the way their minds open and the way their connections open is really, really extraordinary. It's fun, it's intense, it's stretching. If you don't want to be stretched, then this is not the event for you. Um, but stretched in a really, really big way such that by the morning of the third day I feel like a little bit of a, a proud mother hen with all my little chicks who've just exploded out of their shells um, into new versions of themselves. It really is, it's an incredibly moving experience. Um, for me, in fact, at the, on the, I'm embarrassed to say, but on the morning, the morning of day three, last time I got to the stage and couldn't stop crying, and ah. I just was so proud of everybody that was there. It sounds really, I know it sounds a bit. No, it doesn't. It sounds great. I just couldn't stop crying and the MC had to come up and put them into an exercise while I collected myself. It was really emotional. Um, but as I said, it is like the mother hen seeing her chicks, you know, expand and grow and um, it's extraordinary. And then on the final day we bring it all together and, and show you how you can then apply those contacts and those skills and those beautiful pictures that you've refined across a 12 month, um, 12 month publicity plan. So it really is the most comprehensive publicity event that I personally know of and, it, and according to the journalists, the only one of its kind in Australia. Um, so it's, it's hugely fun, it's hugely exciting and talk about fast track. Priceless. Oh yeah. yeah it, it is priceless. It is yeah. priceless. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. You know, it's an, an opportunity of a lifetime uh, for anybody to get their business recognised and really rise above everybody else. You know, it's, uh, um, to have access to people that that can, uh, as you've said before, you know, bring put you know put the eyeballs on on your business. Then this is the way to go. Honestly, to really um, raise your business to the next level. And it takes a bit of bravery. It takes some courage. Um, it does. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people, you know, they don't like to be in the spotlight. But if you're thinking about your business and certainly looking to uh, your future and your succession plan as well, and selling your business down the track, um, which often, you know, I talk to clients about, this definitely will elevate your business to heights uh, that far exceed um, the, the level of where your business would be without mm. it in the future if you're looking to sell. I just, mm. um, you know, and to, and to also impact your client, your client base. Uh, they, you know, anyone that's associated with anybody that's in the media, it's a very proud sort of um, feeling, oh yes, well, you know, I'm their customer or whatever, <laughs> whatever it might be. Yes. People get a little tickle out of things like that too, don't they? Oh, the bragging rights that your customers will have as a result of you being in the media. You know, if you don't, if you don't um, feature yourself in the media because you're feeling a little intimidated about it, um, then what I want you to do is to switch your thinking and think about being featured in the media as a little bit of like a community service for your clients because you give them the opportunity to brag about you. Oh yes, that's my hairdresser that was featured in Vogue last week or whatever it happens to be. People love to the, you know the brush with fame, the 15 seconds of fame and by you stepping up and standing out and featuring your business in the media, you give your clients an excuse to brag about them and feel it just a little bit special in themselves as well. So it's a community service. <laughs> it is. It is. It's your responsibility, right? It is. <laughs> yeah. So um, so thank you so much for that, Kate. That was invaluable, and uh, and certainly, you know, I'm sure that many people are sort of thinking, okay, well, you know, I really want to. For those that really want to take that next step, um, take a leap of faith and really get their business elevated. When is your uh, that workshop you were talking about um, in Sydney or uh, around the country? 
this year? It is in Sydney. Um, there's only one of them. It's in Sydney on the 1st, 2nd and 3rd of May. And the um, website is pitchperfectpublicity.com. Pitchperfectpublicity.com. Now, I've been, I had a conversation with somebody who was at the event last year and he said, your prices are too cheap for the experience that we had. You're only charging 1500 bucks for the event. Are you nuts? Like you need to be charging three or four thousand dollars for this experience. Um, but part of my mission, as you know, Kylie, is to put the power of the media in the hands of all small businesses, no matter whether they're solopreneurs or right through to employing you know, 30 or 40 staff. My mission is to give the power of the media to as many businesses as we possibly can. So it is only priced at $1,500, um, but I know that your community are great, great action takers. And if they do want to come along, then to thank them for sharing this hour or so with us today, then I'm very happy to extend um, a $500 discount to them. They can pay for airfares or put it towards their accommodation. We have people flying in from Perth, all over Brisbane, all over uh, the country. People are flying into Sydney uh, for this media mecca experience. So I'd, I'd love, um, if that's okay with you, to gift your community $500 off the ticket and um, and if they go to the website pitchperfectpublicity.com and use the code Kylie500 in the shopping cart, that will reduce the already crazily low price of 1500 bucks down to just um, 997 for them. So I'd love to have your up, because I know your community are up to stuff. We call them up to stuff business owners and I know that your community is full of them and we, they're exactly the sort of people that need to be in the room because they're the sorts of people that will take action with this information. They will maximise these contacts, they will milk them and they'll be in the media you know, like that. So I'd love to have your people come and join us. Oh, thank you. That is so generous and definitely I was shocked to hear that it was only $1,500 as well and then to give another $500 just just for um, you know, for being here with us today, that's so so generous of you, and uh, and really really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart that you've um, oh, extended awesome. that offer. Thank you so much, and um, and I'm you know I'm looking forward to hearing who's going to take that up, and uh, I certainly will be doing my utmost to get there. Um, the, so again, it's the first, second, third of May this year in Sydney. And uh, Kate's been kind enough to offer you a five hundred dollar uh, discount from the already only fifteen hundred dollar for the three days, and the opportunity to meet lots of journalists who are interested in um, in providing um, some mentoring, not just mentoring, but also to get your story out there and to and you know like nothing else could. It's just an amazing opportunity, and and certainly um, a very unique, as as Kate said just such a unique uh, workshop. There's nothing else like it. Even journalists are, are scratching at each other to get there, I'm told, as well. Yes, <laughs> environment. <laughs> so because they're getting you know, they're getting incredible stories that they may not uh, have ever been exposed to. You know, we, we hear so much negativity through mainstream media. It's about mm. time that, you know, the small business, small to medium business person or solopreneur, whoever it might be, gets a stand and there's no reason why you can't. Um, we're very fortunate in this country where you know, there are opportunities, we have a small population so it, it allows for, uh, for you know, stories to come through that may not have in, in larger countries also. So please, you know, this, is your, this is your opportunity, this is the time, time is now, time is, time is money and, uh, and certainly Know, getting as much exposure as you can uh, for a very little cost for free is is fantastic, and that's why I was so excited to have Kate on, uh, have you on today, Kate? So again, thank you so much. Um, You're very welcome. Thanks. Any questions? Um, please send me through an email, and I'll forward them through to Kate. And Kate, um, where else can we find you online? Um, you can find um, some information about us at thepublicityprincess.com. Mm -hmm. That's right. the, best, uh, the best place okay. to go. 
Okay, great, fantastic. Again, publicityprincess.com. Uh, please visit uh, the site and uh, certainly engage with Kate and, and definitely, uh, again, if you want to go to that um, to Kate's workshop, pitchperfectpublicity.com and the code to get $500 discount is Kylie500. So thanks again, Kate. You have a beautiful Easter. Um, I really look forward to the opportunity to having uh, another conversation with you and possibly seeing you in, uh, in May for sure. Thanks again. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Kylie. Have a lovely Easter, everybody. Take care and be safe. Right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. We're sorry about the technical. We had a couple of technical glitches and a little delay at the start, but thank you again. It's uh, Kylie Smiley here from Mobile Marketing. Link.com.au. Uh, so we'll look forward to hearing from you. Take care. Bye bye.